Hello, Mr. Cox. Good evening, how are you? Pretty good, no complaints. And Mr. Waltz, I haven't met you yet. I'm Patty Williams, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi, John. You got your uh, outline? I did, you're a good man and I appreciate it. I, I just live in fear of disappointing you, Patty. It would be painful. <laughs> just like my husband, I'm sure. That's that's the way it should be, right? Thought so. John, have you retired? No, should I have? <laughs> I didn't say that. I missed the assistance. <laughs> Well, I just figured you'd you'd get a you'd get a overseer uh, that that I'd be a, a redundancy. Oh, you've seen some of the email trails, have you? Hi, Rosie. Rose said she can't hear you, Patty. She'll have to text with you. I've been waiting to see that new hairdo, Mrs. Lyons. Hi, Pat. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Can you see it? Like it. Yeah, it's comfortable. I downloaded it from the web and asked her to do it like that. And have you got your mute on? When I put my finger on the space bar, it opens up. Oh, okay. Uh, I downloaded it from the web and I showed her and it showed all sides and I asked her to do it. So that's how I got it. <laughs> sure, I needed a new do, Patty. Yep, we need a boost every now and then. We do, thank you. And just quickly, how is Larry? Hanging in there, one meeting one appointment after another. He's doing good considering all his problems. Okay, all right. I figured out on my iPad how I can get a full screen.
Hello, Roland. I muted myself. How are you today? Fine, thank you. And uh, Chairman Douglas will be here shortly. He's having some difficulties downstairs.
Hi, Dave. Hi, Ruth. All right. Sorry, folks. Change of passwords downstairs and nothing's working. And so we've had to make some adjustments. Um, I'll call this Thompson Board of Selectmen meeting to order September 17th, 2021. Would you all please rise? The pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. America the Republic to the Republic, Republic which is Republic, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. All right, sorry, folks. Um, Patty, just to give you before you go into roll call. I'll have you take roll call. We're going to come out of executive session because we met at six o'clock and we've got to take action on two items. And then we'll move on from there. So you can go ahead and take the roll and then we'll make those motions. And you're on mute, Patty. David Douglas. I am here. Mary Brilliant. Here. Ruth Lyon. Here. Matt Nixon. Present. Roland Pass. Here. Thank you. They're all our members of the president. David, uh, Derek Skripchansky, a town manager and assistant town manager. Mark Waltz is also on tonight. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you, Patty. All right, so we've come out of executive session and we had two items that we dealt with tonight. The first item, and let me make sure I get the proper number here, would be 20-64. And I will make a motion of this. The treasurer is authorized to sell the tax acquired condominium units located at 55 Monroe Lane and 88 Monroe Lane by sealed bid process with the bids due to the town manager's office by October 13th at 3 p.m., at which time they will be open with a winning bid, if any, to be determined by the municipal officers at their meeting on October 15th, 2020. Said bid process to utilize the procedures set forth in the Town of Thompson Management of a Tax Acquired Property Guidelines, with the exception that in lieu of a minimum bid being included in the notice of sale, the right to reject any and all offers will be reserved. Do I have a second? Second. So we have motion and a second. And um, for that motion, any further discussion on that? No. Nope. Patty, would you take a vote, please? Okay. And I need uh, a for or against David Douglas. Four. Very brilliant. Uh, abstain. Abstain. Okay. Ruth Lyons. Four. Okay. Matt Nixon. In favor. Rowan Cass. Four. Okay. We have one, two, three, four in favor and one abstention. Thank you, Patty. Now 20 65, also coming out of executive session. Um, that motion is to authorize the treasurer to deed the tax acquired real estate located at 18 Mallet Drive to the former owner, Maine Drywall Consultants Incorporated, the total sum of $8,247.51. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and seconded. Patty, would you do that all over again, please? I will. David Douglas, for or against? David Douglas, you need to unmute. Four. <laughs> Thank you, Marie Brilliant. Abstained. Abstained, okay. Ruth Lyons. Four. Matt Nixon. Four. Roland Tufts. Four. Same result as the last call. Uh, one, two, three, four in favor, one abstention. Thank you, Patty. All right, so this now we'll come into our regularly scheduled program. Um, as I said earlier, we have trouble with the computer downstairs and that means no one's manning the phone bank at this moment. Uh, you can still call in and the person who answers will take your question and we'll get that relayed somehow. 
So we are going on to the town manager's report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, manager's report. The clerk's office is taking applications for absentee ballot requests. They're available by phone, mail, in person, and online. As of today, we have received over 2,100 applications for these ballots. And due to the increased demand for the absentee ballots and COVID-19 safety concerns, the town has purchased a state-approved ballot box that has been installed at the municipal complex near the flags and monuments closest to town hall. The state will reimburse the town for 80% of its cost. Also, I'd like to report the town has been granted permission by the Secretary of State in SAD 75 to use the new high school gymnasium for the November 3rd, 2020 election. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. All information and advertisements, I'm sorry, advertisements will be posted on social media, signs, the town website, and all local newspapers. I'd like to report the town's net tax commitment will result in a tax rate decrease from 19.15 to $17.86 to $1,000 of assessed value. Contributing factors to this rate decrease are elected officials' conservative approach to this year's budget, a $49 million increase in valuation, and increases in projected state revenue sharing and general revenues. Thompson property owners will receive their tax bills during the next few days, and many will notice an increase in their assessed value of their parcels. This increase reflects real estate sales prices continuing to increase in Thompson within the prior year. The goal of the evaluation increase is to keep the town's assessments reasonably close to 100% of market value. If the assessed values diverge too far from market value, state law will require proportional reductions to homestead, veteran, and blind exemptions. Reducing those exemptions would also reduce state reimbursement, causing an increase to local property tax burden. Uh, from the Solid Waste Director, the annual Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day will take place on Saturday, October 17th, 2020, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Brunswick Public Works, located at 9 Industry Road, Brunswick, Maine. The cost is free to residents, but you must pre-register by visiting the Brunswick website at www.brunswickme.org. Information is also available on Town of Topsom website. Uh, from the staff, I'd like to report that we are sound sad, very sad, to announce that Debbie Fisher, who has been with the town of Thompson for 17 years, will be retiring on September 30th. In all her years as finance manager, the town of Thompson has been financially solvent, a direct reflection of her hard work and attention to detail. She is not only competent and reliable, she is a pleasure to work with. Debbie will be missed and her work will be remembered and appreciated. On behalf of the town staff, Debbie, we wish you and your family the very best. The town is, could not be more fortunate and is pleased to announce that the position of finance director has been filled by Mr. George Zuki. George brings extensive experience to the position, including experience as the executive director of the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank and a multitude of executive finance positions. The town is lucky to have him and we look forward to seeing how he guides the financial needs of the town. Welcome, George. Thank you, have a good night. Now, are there any questions of the manager? <laughs> Seeing nothing. All right, we can get all our masks away. Um, so, as I said earlier, if anyone does want to call and ask questions tonight, they will, instead of coming in and broadcasting them over the phone like we have in the past downstairs, they'll, at the phone, they'll take a message, they'll bring it to me and I'll read it. We'll make this thing work as well as we can and I will try to watch for hands too, so thank you. We are on to boards and committee reports and update. Update from TDI ECD, John Shattuck, Thompson Economic and Community Development Incorporated Director. Good evening, Good. John. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and everyone else. Um, brief one tonight, a uh, couple of things uh, in uh, general, uh, the Government Review Committee at their September meeting earlier this month, reviewed the former government uh, questionnaire that they sent out to towns that are similarly situated in size 
uh, to Topsom and got back uh, about a third of them so far. Uh, and they're working through those. Uh, interesting how many towns, or not surprising perhaps, have raised these same questions. Uh, maybe not without a formal code requirement in the government review committee, but nonetheless, towns do seem to survey this every once in a while. Um, they uh, reviewed also a preliminary draft of their report, uh, which uh, you can surmise from the fact that it will be a brief and very direct report that I, I wasn't involved in the writing of it. Uh, and they expect to get that to you folks uh, sometime this fall, well before the end of the year. Uh, the Topsom Brunswick Bridge Project, uh, the lawsuit opposing the bridge replacement has finally entered uh, about a year after it was initiated its uh, active litigation phase uh, earlier this month. Um, since the preliminary motions are for summary judgment, there is a bare possibility that this could be concluded quickly one way or the other. Um, but at any rate, because litigation and other permitting issues, the RFP for construction is not expected at this point to be released until early next year, probably February. Uh, and in general business news, um, the Crooker uh, rezoning process returns to the planning board in October uh, with a preliminary draft of proposed zoning for the relocation area. Uh, so getting to some detail at this point. Um, the um, um, Health and Human Services uh, pr preliminary analysis of the Certificate of Need application by Central Maine Health is likely to be released in, uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, that preliminary analysis may include uh, an indication of their preliminary recommendation regarding the decision on the application. And whenever released that preliminary, easy for me to say, preliminary analysis will trigger another um, public uh, comment period uh, to be focused only on the uh, preliminary report. And finally, uh, Wicked Joe Coffee, which is uh, up on whose behalf the town has secured a CDBG EDP grant, that's Community Development Block Grant, Economic Development Program, in the amount of $500,000. CDBG, uh, excuse me, Wicked Joe has come in and executed two required underlying agreements, one indemnifying the town for any lack of uh, uh, satisfaction of any of the grant terms, and uh, a community development services contract with both the town and the Mid Coast Economic Development District who is certified to and provides on behalf of the town the administrative fees for the grant, uh, which will be paid uh, by, or at least reimbursed by Wicked Joe. So no expense to the town on that. And that's it, unless there's any questions. Any questions of John? Seeing nothing. Thank you, John. Enjoy your night. All right, we will move on to the next board's committee reports and updates. Um, an update regarding the establishment of Energy Committee Assistant Town Manager Mark Waltz. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a little recruiting push, I guess, to the beginning of this. Uh, we are looking to find community volunteers who would like to be on the Energy Committee. As of three this afternoon, we have one applicant. Um, so if you know of anyone that you think might be interested in the committee, please um, reach out to us. Uh, in addition, if you have think of other ways we can try to get people, we're looking for some creative ways to try to fill a lot of vacancies in a lot of committees. Um, if you go to the board and committee page on the website, you can see we have vacancies on practically every committee. Um, another one we're looking to fill people on or fill is the finance committee. Um, we've reached out to the members from the last year and we've got four that are interested in continuing to serve. But that means we've got about five openings we have to fill. Uh, so if you know of people that you think might be good candidates and you want us to reach out and try to help recruit them, uh, or you know of people, please encourage them to fill out applications so that we can have some to bring before the select board to consider for uh, energy committee, finance committee, and some of these other ones. Uh, the last thing I want to address uh, is committee related is, is Topson Development Inc. Um, as you folks know, but the public may not, uh, you appoint the directors to Topson Development Inc. Um, and the members of the nonprofit corporation are actually the then current sitting uh, members of the Board of Selectmen. 
So when the Thompson Development Inc. bylaws were amended in 2012, a director position on TDI was reserved for a member of the planning board. Um, TDI, as you know, promotes and assists with economic development in Topsom. Uh, the planning board is charged with objective review of projects that come before them. Concerns have been raised that TDI's organizational structure may create a situation where the planning board member who also serves on TDI could at least be perceived uh, to have a bias when TDI has taken a position on a project that then comes before the planning board. Uh, to date, these issues have been addressed with recusals as they come up, but we believe it's prudent to obtain an opinion from the town attorney on whether serving on both the planning board and as a TDI director are what is referred to as incompatible positions. Um, if so, TDI's bylaws would need to be revised. We're awaiting the attorney's opinion, but in the meantime, the planning board member who also serves on TDI, Don Spann, um, has requested a leave of absence from TDI while the issue is evaluated, um, which we recommend that you accept this evening. We also recommend that the planning board position on TDI be left vacant until we hear back from the attorney. TDI's board has more than the nine members that it has to have to function, so the position can be left vacant for now. Are there any questions of Mark? And I'll just, as we do that, um, Dawn had sent a letter. Yep, go ahead, Ruth. Just my question. This has gone on for quite a while, for a few years, and now it seems to be brought up as an issue, and I just wondered why. Um, maybe some of it's a fresh set of eyes looking at things, um, but we also, as you know, maybe have some relatively controversial projects that will be coming before the planning board, some of which, you know, have been before TDI or maybe before. So in order to try to make the planning board decisions, um, I guess, as unappealable as possible, we want to make sure we're doing everything as best as we can. And so we thought it's worthwhile to get the attorney's opinion before things get too far down the road. And Don has submitted a letter for his leave of absence. Um, and somebody, you know, he's asked us to approve it. So without any objection, I would say that we approve it. It was something he asked for. Um, yep. Just to have a leave of absence. Don had submitted that. I think he copied everybody. But uh, so I, he had asked that we accept that. And without, so everyone are fine with accepting Don's leave of absence at this time. Yes. yes. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mark. You disappeared. Just one thing, um, I'm gonna follow up on the email that's still hanging out there um, for everyone, because uh, I haven't had any responses yet regarding some of my inquiries, but we'll keep that in email. I guess my other question would be, um, can we still get agendas for TDI posted on the town website? And if it's possible, maybe think about moving the time from 7.30 in the morning to a time more amenable so the public can attend? I think I might defer to John on that one. Okay. Uh, we are working on that. It's been something in process. The external site has been discontinued for some time. Uh, my remotely working is complicated a little bit, but I expect we'll have that up and running before the next meeting. Um, as to time of meeting, uh, this is something that's always being determined by the TDI board. And because uh, the members tend to be business folks, uh, this is the time they choose to meet uh, because it's least disruptive to their days. They actually meet at eight, eight to nine on, I believe it's uh, second, I have to look at my schedule, second or third Wednesdays, but it's eight in the morning for one hour. Okay, so half an hour difference. Uh, fair enough. It would still be great to get their agendas up online, even on the town website right now, even regardless of whether or not TDI's website's functional. That'd be very fantastic. Working on it. Great. Thank you. Any other questions regarding these? Matt, you said you had two things. An email. No, that was it. I'll follow up with uh, the email that, that's still sitting out there. Um, just follow up with you guys after that. So... Nothing here to discuss. Okay. Well, this is, okay. This is where we need to discuss things though. I, I just want to make sure, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking. So I'm just confused that. Well, I mean, if you recall the email that I sent earlier this week and I haven't received a response from anyone, 
um, regarding the uh, conflict of interest, the perceived con conflict of interest, and uh, TDI's membership in particular regarding the select board's pronounced neutrality in this issue. Um, and then we have our one of our boards submitting a very, very powerful letter of support for something that we have declared publicly remaining neutral on. So I will, I'm happy to keep talking about this in, in email if you folks would like to respond and we can talk about it at the next meeting, which is what I'm trying to do, give you folks a chance to maybe read it. Um, or I we think, can talk about it right now. I think what I, we need I, to do is if we're gonna talk about an individual, we need to set it up as an executive session and probably not do it as email. And we can set that up. I mean, email is helpful too, because we have public record, especially if it's about conflict of interest. But I'm I'm happy to do an executive session as long as we can talk about it. Yeah, all you yeah, we'll talk. Thank you. Just our just respond to my email. That's all I'm asking. Any of you? Thank you, Matt. As a board, we function here at our meetings. I understand. That's not that true, Dave. We function all the time via email as well. That's not true at all. No, but when we do the public's business. Yep, it's which we also do via email, which is publicly available, Dave. That's that's the public. That's the public's email. That's their ability to access that email too. So it's not like it's hidden. I'm just saying. I want. I would like to continue to have this discussion. We can have it in an executive session, or we can have it via email. It doesn't really matter to me. I would just like response from someone on the board regarding my issue. Thank you. Okay. We are on to correspondence. So again, 373-5090, the phone number to call in. And if you have anything, perhaps we have one right now. So we've got one phone call, uh, Yvette Meunier, 35 Prospect Street, question, uh, when are they accepting applications? What's the time frame of accepting t applications for the Energy Committee um, in addition to the committee? We'll take them, but hopefully fill it up as soon as we can. Um, we need to have at least three for it. We're hoping to get five, but as soon as we get three, we'll get prepared things for uh, people for you to interview. So we'll bring it forward as soon as we can get at least three. So we'll do that as soon as we get the three, we'll hold interviews and we'll move it forward. Okay, but that's open now, correct? It, it is open now. And if you go to the uh, government page on the website, and then one of the subcategories of it is uh, boards and committees, and then right on that page, there's both the application and there's a listing for all the committees that we're looking for people, as well as the energy committee. Thank you, Mark. That actually worked. 373-5090. Um, that's the phone number. Did anyone have any mailed correspondence to them? Seeing nothing. So we'll give it through a couple seconds here. We'll keep watching. Um, there is an adjustment to the agenda. Oh, Rose says we have two applications as of today. What's that? Uh, Rose says in chat we have two applications as of today. All right. We're still waiting on that one more. It would help if I open the chat function. Um, so we, there is an adjustment to the agenda, 20-66. It's consideration any appropriate action to approve the town manager to order supplies and complete work outlined in the approved Keep Maine Healthy 2020 Municipal COVID-19 Awareness Campaign Grant. So I will make that a motion to add it to the end of our meeting this evening, 20-66, so that we can start doing that. Do I have a second? Second. Second. So a motion and seconded, all in favor? Unanimous. Thanks, Patty. Got <laughs> it. 
Um, so we'll keep doing a couple things here and I'll watch the phones. We have consent calendar approval of the minutes of the regular selectman meeting on September 3rd, 2020. And approval to extend, uh, let's do that. So let's do these two separately, correct? Um, so consent approval of the minutes of regular selectman meeting September 3rd, 2020. Do I have a, so moved? I moved. Second. All, all in favor? Unanimous. And number two, approval to extend the registrar's office hours on Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020, National Voter Registration Day, and on Thursday, October 29th, 2020, until 7 p.m. for the purpose of additional hours for voter registration as required by state statute 21-A, subsection 122.6. So moved. I have a second. Second. Motion seconded. All in favor of doing what we have to do. I do not see any further phone phone calls coming in, so we're going to move into our public hearing. Twenty sixty-two consideration any appropriate action on the application for a special amusement permit for the American Legion Corey Edwin Garver American Legion Post two hundred two. Tonight we have uh, Nancy Laffin <coughs> of the Post with us. Hello. So if we, hi there, Nancy. So I'll take us into the public hearing. And a reminder: once we're in the public hearing, the only people who can ask questions are members of the board. And good evening, Nancy. So we'll go through. Um, you've done this before. Yes. So yes. Um, exact same setup as always. I'm going to just make sure I have a couple. Why don't you explain what you want to do and then whatever I can't fill in the blanks here. We'll okay. do that. Okay, so we're, yep, we're, we're getting um, approval for our liquor license, hopefully, and our vesticular license. Um, we are going to be doing pretty much the same that we do all the time. We might have an event outside. Um, Alcohol and beer are always in the allotted spots. They're not allowed in the parking lot. Nothing's allowed to come in. Um, and as far as any anything out of the ordinary, we're, we're pretty much doing the same that we do every year. So this is looking for essentially the entertainment, live live music, DJs. Mm -hmm. um, you, the liquor license expiration date. That wasn't. I didn't notice that. You know what that is? Often. It's October. October ninth. Okay. Yep. Nancy, my only question is, uh, is that a Bluetooth headset that you have? No. No, okay. I was going to say, does it work well? It does. It's a Jabra 2. Okay. Yep. Nancy, when you do the functions, any of the furniture moved in the hall or downstairs at all? Any of the furniture moved? Yeah, well, basically upstairs, it's the hall, so yeah. it's always yeah. set up the same way. Down in the, and do you guys utilize, you use, utilize like a stage area? You don't move tables around when you have entertainment, is that correct? Correct, yeah, everything's set up pre in advance. Okay. All right, I really got to keep track of this because we do this every year. So size of the lounge downstairs. We can have uh, on, in no, not normal. The, not the occupancy kind oh. of the layout, and I, I'm always guessing it's about 30 feet wide downstairs by 50 feet deep. That's probably right. Okay. I, I could tell you our, our roof is 60, 60 square, if that helps. <laughs> I just remember delivering pizzas in college from Domino's, so I knew the size of it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then upstairs, it's roughly the same thing, the 30 by, the 30 by 50. Yeah. And the seating capacity you had put in the um, 81 in the lounge, 263 in the hall, though you're operating under the governor's order of 50 at this time. Correct, yep. Okay. Um, and police, we have letters from police and fire that they have no issues with this. Any other questions? We can ask questions anytime we want, so. I don't Just see a comment. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Just a comment. They've done this for years and years and they've always respected 
what we've asked for and I don't believe there's been any problems for a long time. So I just recommend we pass it. Thank you, Ruth. No question. Oh, I'm not seeing, Roland, did you, sorry, did you say something? I said no questions for me. Oh, okay. So I don't see any hands raising anyone from anywhere else. So I am going to close the public hearing. So now we're closed. Uh, so to the board, I will uh, read this conclusion that based on the findings, it is concluded that the issuance of a special amusement permit would not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare, or would violate municipal ordinances, rules, or regulations. Does the board agree? Yes. I'm looking around. Yes, they agree. All right. So. I'll make the motion just because it's been written here. Application, I will make a motion that the application for a special amusement permit for the Corey E. Garver American Legion Post 202 be granted as meeting requirements of Maine Revised Statutes, Tiny, Title 25-A, Section 1054 in the Thompson Code Chapter 71, Article 1, 6, Section 6 and 7. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. So, so we have motioned and seconded. Patty, this is yours. I'll let you have this. Okay. Who is in favor of passing this? Marie Brilliant, how do you vote? In favor. David Douglas. In favor. Ruth Lyons. In favor. Pat Nixon. In favor. And Roland Tess. In favor. Unanimous to be in favor Thank of passing. Thank you, Patty. I will have this sheet to you tonight so you can put it in the notes. And everyone, we will need to sign off on this. This will be on the table um, in our office to do that. Roland, there's one thing you've got to come in and sign to. We are on. What's that? I'll be in tomorrow for that. Okay. We are on to new business. Dennis, 74 degrees. All right, 20-63. Consideration and any appropriate action to award the bid for winter sand. Dennis Cox, the public works director, is gonna talk about winter. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Chairperson Douglas. <laughs> you are welcome. Hey, it's that time of year again. We're going out to bid. We've been out for the winter sand for Public Works. There was $15,000 budgeted for the winter sand. Um, we've gone out to see who's going to give us the best price like we do in past years. We received three bids. All three bids qualify. And I'm recommending the bid from COP Excavating for $9.97 a yard delivered to the Public Works garage to be accepted and approved by the select board. Are there any questions of the Public Works Director? Seeing nothing, I will make a motion that we accept the bid of COP Excavating Incorporated, $9.97 per cubic yard, delivered for winter sand. Do I have a second? Second. We motioned and seconded. Patty, it's all you. David Douglas, approved or disapproved? Uh, yes, I'll approve. <laughs> A while. Mary Brilliant. Approve. Thank you. Ruth Lyons. Approve. Matt Nixon. Approve. And Mr. Tufts. Approve. Unanimously approved. Suppose next month, Dennis, you'll have a plow truck ready for us to do too, right? Well, I, I won't, David. It's scheduled, the chassis is scheduled to come out from production and December 15th, I was told yesterday. But no, it's going to be a while yet after the first of the year, but we're in good shape. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so we have item 2066, which is the item we added on, was uh, sent to everybody today. The consideration and appropriate action to approve the town manager to order supplies and complete work outline in the approved Keep Maine Healthy 2020 Municipal COVID-19 Awareness Campaign Grant. And due to COVID, 
I'm going to try to handle all this so we don't have to keep swapping computers and but the town manager can answer questions. We all have a memo. Um, the town was approved by Maine DHHS for $251,146 in the Keep Maine Healthy Municipal COVID-19 Awareness Grant Part 2. Um, this grant is specific functions, supplies, maintenance, repairs, modifications, and projects related to COVID-19, public education, public health support, and physical distancing, and local business assistance. Um, in our application, 115,206 was for personnel services expenses, 87,362 for installing a glass barrier at the town hall public service desks, installations of hands-free plumbing devices in the library and rec facilities, installation of hands-free door entry units in town hall, installation of UV lighting, and an upgrade in the air handler exchange units to increase air quality and removal of air particles in town hall and public safety building. Additionally, so that 87 covers all of those things. The plexiglass did not cover $87,000, just so everyone knows. The grant also is $48,578 for materials, supplies for decontamination, social distancing, cleaning, sanitation, signage, thermometers, etc. cetera. Um, to be eligible, and this is why it got added tonight, it was just discovered, to be eligible, all work must be completed and supplies must be received and paid by October 31st, um, 2020. So it's an extremely tight turnaround to do all this. Um, so, is there any questions of this? The town manager is listening. And so basically, um, the, I'll make the motion. So if there was none, make a motion to approve the town manager to order supplies and complete work outlined in the approved Keep Maine Healthy 2020 Municipal COVID-19 Awareness Campaign Grant. Do I have a second for that? Second. The title was long enough. I thought someone would be ready for it. <laughs> so we've been motioned and seconded. Um, all those in favor. Patty, you do that. Have at all it. Right. David Douglas, are you in favor? I am in favor. Marie Brilliant. In favor. Ruth Lyons. Favor. Matt Nixon. In favor. Okay, and William Tuff. In favor. Unanimously in favor, Chairman. Betty, thank you so much. You're welcome. Most welcome time of the evening. <laughs> All right, I'll Oops, did you adjourn. A second that. <laughs> All those in favor, I'm sure, is unanimous. <laughs> yeah. Betty, you don't even have to lift your head for that one. Thank you, folks. Have a good night. You too, thank you. <laughs>